Hi guys, welcome to episode 16 of Best Mac Apps. Today I'll be showing you other 6 best Mac apps for May 2018. Apology for the delay because it is not easy to find 6 new apps that are both unique and useful to show you every month. But eventually, I managed to find them. Okay, so without further delay, let's get started. The first tab on the list is called Endurance. Here. What this app does is that it will automatically turn your Mac into a low power mode when your battery drops to certain percentage level just like in your iPhone or iPad so that you can save some battery power Have you ever wished that your Mac could have a low power mode just like your iOS devices? As you know that Apple doesn't want to give us this option just yet Just like the Siri feature here It took them a long time before they decided to implement Siri feature on Mac Well today you don't have to wait that long for Apple to implement low power mode feature on your Mac You can get it today Just download this app called Endurance and you can have low power mode for your Mac computer. Based on the developer of this app, once you turn on low power mode, you can save your Mac runtime up to 20%. So there's nothing much to configure here, you can see. Right now I'm on charging, but if I unplug my charging cable, so the top here, it show the calculating, it will calculate how much time I have left. And it say here, low power mode starts at 50%. If you click start low power mode here, what it gives you is, it will dim the screen. It will monitor the expensive apps, the apps that would use a lot of power. It also will hide the background apps and also monitor the flash plugin as well. And it will slow down processor so that it will consume less power. If you want it to start at lower or higher percentage, go to settings here. You can see you can let it automatically start at 90% or 70% or 30% or 15% is up to you. So with this, when you turn it on, it will dim your Mac so that you can use it up to 20% longer. And you can see all of these features are now active. And you can also turn this on as well, hiding background apps. You even have the option to slow down processor. It's not ticked yet, but if you tick it, it will slow down the processor so that it will consume less energy so that you can use your Mac longer. So if your Mac battery drop to the percentage that you set, like 50%, it will automatically activate low power mode for you so that you can save up to 20% more power so that you can use your Mac longer. You can see here they show you the app that consume a lot of energy. So with screen flow, it will drain your battery very quickly without charging. If you're on charging mode, it will be fine. But if you're not on charging mode and you record a video using screen flow, it will drain your battery very quickly. So I'd recommend you to quit the app. But I cannot do that because right now I am using it. You can see it also recommend you to take action against the app that is consuming too much energy so that you can save more power to be able to use your Mac longer. Okay. This this is app number one. Let's move on to app number two. App number two is called Finita. I'm not sure if I pronounced this app correctly because this is not an E. So let's say it's Finita. So this is the app. What this app does is that it will keep a window open on top of everything else that is opening. So if you have this app running, let's say you want to watch a movie, you want it to run on top of anything else, you can use this app so that it will allow you to watch that movie without any interruption. What really awesome about this app is that even though it keeps a window open on top of anything else, it provides you with a feature called see through and click through. If you look at here, you have see through and click through, which means you can still see or click on what is behind that opening window. Let me show you example here. Let's say I have this file. If you want it to keep opening on top of anything else, you just drag it and drop on the app. You can see it show plus sign here, you release. It will open with this app and if you try to open other application, it will be behind. This one will always on top. And if you say, if this on top, how can I see what's behind? That's why it has the very cool feature. Here this feature called see through. If I click on it, it will activate this one and this one both. Now I open this. You see it's still behind, but if you drag your cursor, you can see, now it will allow you to see through. Whatever behind it, you can see. You can even click something behind it. Let's say I go to a website, whatever website here, you can still click on this. Usually if something blocked, you cannot click on it. But with this see through feature, you can click on it. You can see what's behind that spot. You can see the word subscribe here is behind. But with see through feature, you can click on that. 
This is really cool. If you talk about video, let's try to, to, to open video. Okay, let's try to open this video. Just drag and drop. Because of copyrighted reason, I have to mute the video. So if you want to be able to use it again, you have to untick see through here. If you tick on it, you cannot control this part. This is one drawback of this app. So before you activate see through feature, you just customize the app the way you want it to be first. Like I want it to be this big. So after you're ready, again, try to open Let's say you want to browse something at the same time while you're watching movie. So right now you cannot do anything behind the background because it's on top right now. So now you want to watch movie and at the same time you want to browse something. Let's play this movie. And then you want to browse the internet at the same time. So right now you cannot click on anything. You cannot do anything here because this one is on top of it. To be able to use another app in the background, you have to click on this app again and then click on see through. So right now the video is running. So you're watching the video and at the same time you can use Google. Let's say you want to configure the app first. Go to preferences. Here. So the thing is, at the moment the mark radius that allows you to see through. You think it's too small, you want it bigger so that you can see bigger. You can just drag this to adjust it make it as big as you want like the maximum is 400 px once you're done you activate this see through again now you can see it's very big let's say put it here the movie and again you activate this now it's bigger so that you can see what's in the background clearer because sometimes you think it's too small and you want it bigger this is how you do it you just go to preferences and then you can configure it to the way you want it to be again you can just do anything in the background while the video is still running you can listen to the video and do your work and once you're done you just watch the video this is really cool and not just video let's say i have this file i want it to run here so I have this and I want to type the answer key of this grammar test. So I just go to let's say Microsoft Word and then this one block you let's say. So now I type something. I cannot see the part behind this window. But with this feature activated I can see through what's behind this window. So that I can edit or change to the way I want it to be. So as you can see this app is really useful. Okay this is app number 2. Let's move on to app number 3. App number 3 is called Trip Mode. Here. What this app does is that it allows you to block any app from accessing the internet automatically by itself. This is especially useful when you don't want certain apps to access the internet without your permission. With this app, you don't need to turn off your Wi-Fi here. So sometimes you want to turn it off because some apps you don't want it to access internet. But only that certain app, not all other apps. And also with this app, you will know which app is accessing the internet because it will show you a list like this so that you can block those unwanted apps so right now it's in the block mode when it is gray like that if you want it to access internet you just tick on it and right now this app can access internet so all running apps let's say i try to open app store if you go here see app store can access internet if i untick it i try open app store again so you can see it cannot connect to the app store which means it cannot connect to the internet so with this, with this app, you can allow access to any app that you wanted to be able to connect to the internet and you can block any internet access to any app that you don't want it to connect to the internet at your fingertip. It's really cool. So with this app running, no apps can access internet without your permission. Even Safari here, if you untick it, you go to Safari. See this is Safari can't open the page. It cannot get access to the internet. But if you turn it on, go back to Safari. Now I gain access to the internet. And it also shows you here how much data each app is consuming. Okay, this is app number three. Let's move on to app number four. App number four is called Timeless here. What this app does is that it allows you to set up unlimited alarm clocks on your Mac. For some reason, Apple doesn't allow us to set up alarm clocks on our Mac. Even with Siri 
feature activated. Usually if it is on iPhone, you can just speak to Siri, it will set up the alarm clock for you. But even with Siri on Mac, you still cannot use it to set up the alarm clock. Apple just doesn't allow us to use this feature on Mac. And if you ask me, why do I need to set up an alarm clock on my Mac? I would say, sometimes it's very handy to be able to set up an alarm clock on your Mac. You will never know, you know. For example, like when you do a project at night and then you accidentally fall asleep. But with this alarm clock on, it will wake you up right in front of your computer so that you can continue your work. Quickly. So it is always a good idea to be able to set alarm clocks in all our devices. And if you take a look at here, if you click on the settings, you can add the alarm clock anytime you want. You can even put a title of the alarm clock, set up the day. You can set up all the days like this so that it will go off every day. And the great thing here is you have the sound here. You can see you can change the sound, you can add, decrease or increase. So you can see you can increase or decrease the volume, you can set it to loop or fade in as well. You have more features with this app, it's very cool. You can change the sound to anything else, like this one. You can set the time to whatever time you want, let's say 8 o'clock. Okay, test it, click confirm. And you can see it's a, in 53 minutes, it will activate the alarm clock. And another great feature with this alarm clock is that you can activate nightstand mode. Like for some reason, you just let your Mac run the whole night. Let's say you download something so big that you have to let it run the whole night. You can just turn into nightstand mode by clicking here. And you can see and at the bottom they have this to show that your alarm clock is activated and it just activate beautiful nightstand mode like this so with this timeless alarm clock app you can bring alarm clock feature from your iphone to your mac okay this is app number four let's move on to app number five app number five is called itrush here this is the look of the app as its name suggests what this app does is that it allows you to completely uninstall an application quickly and conveniently because this app has a special algorithm to find all related files and folders to that app so that you can delete them all together. Okay, let me show you an example here. So to be able to uninstall an app, you can see here is a double click, double click on it. And you can see here, if you click on all items, it will show you everything that you can delete. If you scan for it, you can see it's scanning now. And if you want to only uninstall applications, you click on here. All the install application, you can see it here. You can uninstall any application you want. You can also uninstall widgets or even preference panes. So sometimes some of them you have installed accidentally and you don't know how to uninstall it. You will see it here. Just click on it and remove it will be gone. Plug in as well. All plugins you install on your browsers and anywhere else will be here. You can remove it from here as well. So let's say you want to remove an application. Let's say I want to remove this app. I just click remove. It shows me this. And look at here, they say related items 11 and the size is 199 bytes. If you turn on expert mode, it will search for more related files. But if you're not sure, do not turn this on because it will delete more than it should be, which means it may cause problem to other apps. If you're not sure, do not turn expert mode on. Only if you're sure you turn this on. If you turn it on, it will start searching for more. You can see right now it's uh, still 11 files, but the size is different, 124 megabytes. Here show you this supported file, these two that you have to delete as well. If I click delete, done. And so right now it's in the trash. And there's a feature here called ghost mode. You turn this on, you can see here they have the icon of the app on your status bar, which means if you click on it, it will show all the feature you have. You can even force the empty trash from here, or you can just empty it from here, it's up to you. Let's say I empty the trash, it's gone. So with the ghost mode on, I don't have to open iTrash. I just drag an application that I want to uninstall. Let's say this one. Drag to the trash here. It just uninstalls as normal, but it shows me this. Usually without iTrash, if you drag into the trash, it will not show you this. Which means it's only delete the application. It won't delete the related files. But with iTrash, 
it will show me this i can also delete the deleted files i just click delete it's gone and because it is the ghost mode whatever it does it will not go to the trash it just delete those files directly it will not go to the trash but if you run the i trash it will go to the trash first so that if you want to put it back you still have a chance and with ghost mode you cannot put it back okay this is app number five let's move on to the last app of the list the last app of the list is called power manager here this is the look of the app what this app does is that it allows you to fully control your max energy consumptions have you ever wanted to set up time schedules so that your mac can shut itself down or power on by itself automatically if you take a look at the system preferences here and you go to energy saver it also has the feature at the bottom here you can see the word schedule it allows you to start up or wake up you can choose every day or every weekend or whatever or you can choose the exact day and the time you want it to start up or wake up and you can also see here second option is you can set a time for it to sleep or restart or shut down but there is no feature that you can set it to power on your mac at certain time only shut it down but power on there's no feature but with this one you can have that feature just click add here or add here and you have a lot of options here you see tasks choose a template for your task so you have a lot of like home schedule they have description down here museum schedule and on demand they have a lot of options you can open uh, documents on demand or run script open document or open document after an activity and down here you can see they have power off power on let's say choose power on click continue and they have the option to power on always up but i would choose only power on and you can set the day the time you want it to be with this one if you take a look at it you turn this on the option you have is only like monday tuesday like that you can do it like weekdays we can so on which means you do it again and again but you don't have the option to set it to specific date with this one you can set it to specific date like let's say you want it to power on let's say next month you can change that to next month and the day and the time you want so it, with this you have more options with the built-in feature you have very limited option you want it this month and the time you want it to power on it's at 7 let's say 740 which means today right now it's 732 click continue you can even name the event i just put power on you can also even write some notes about the event click continue click add now i have it here but because computer is already on, to be able to power on, it has to be off first. So maybe you have another task to power it off. Shut down. Same thing here. Maybe I set it to like 7.35. You continue. Power off. Okay, add. Now I have these two. But it's not running yet because you see the word start is still not play yet. You just click here. It will start and it will show you here. You see here, they just pop up a notification saying you have 1 minute and 45 seconds until power off. And if you don't want it to power off, you can just adjust it here. You can adjust it like that. And if you don't want it, just stop here. It will not activate this. With this app, I can guarantee you that you can set your Mac to power on at any time you want it to be. And I tried already. Right now, I cannot do that for you because um, if I do that, my screen recording will stop. But I can guarantee you that it will work. And also, you cannot just only manage your schedule for powering on or off. You can even add more feature to it. For example, I, I can even run an application at a certain time. You see, launch an application click continue you can drag an application here or just click choose here it will allow you to choose an application i say i want to open this app just click open click continue and then you set the day the time that you want it to open you continue the time i set it to eight leave everything like before and don't forget to click start just wait for it okay you can see it just open it quickly it's just like when you want to power it on or off it just do the same thing what i love the most about this app is that it has this feature here power on to me this is the only attractive feature that i love because in the past i cannot find any app that can power on by itself because usually when you shut your computer down everything stop running it will not power on by itself but with this app i was so surprised when i tested it i set it to shut down at 6 40 and then i set it to power on at 7 and at 7 o'clock at exactly 7 o'clock it powered power back on by itself it's really cool you can try this app by yourself to find out more this is a really useful app okay that's it guys these are six best mac apps for may 2018 thank you so much for watching if you like the video please give us a thumbs up comment down below and subscribe for more useful videos in the future have a great day guys see you in the next video